122 facts about the 122 Chaos Pokemon. Let's do this. Chespin. Chespin is the first and one of only two non-poison type Pokemon in the anime to be seen using the move Toxic. Quilladin. According to his wife, Pokedex entry, Quilladin shrinks their lower body by running into each other, which is hilarious. Chestnut. Chestnut's arms can combine into a perfectly round shield, and that's what it looks like. Finnegan. Finnegan has the lowest base stat total out of all starter Pokemon. Braxton. In Pokemon Tournament, some Braxton's melee attacks are directly taken from the moveset of Amy Sorrow from the Soul Calibur series. Delphox. Each of the Chaos starter Pokemon are inspired by role-playing character classes. Chestnut's line is based on the Paladin class. Delphox's line is based on the Mage class. And Greninja's line is based on the Rogue class. Froakie. Froakie is the first Water-type Pokemon that Ash evolves since its Krabby, which was 776 episodes prior. Frogadier. According to his Pokedex entry, Frogadier can scale a 2,000-foot building in only one minute. Greninja. Greninja won a Japanese popularity pool in 2016 and the Pokemon of the Year pool in 2020. And because of this, many people regard Greninja as the most popular Pokemon. Bunnelby. Bunnelby's Shield Dex entry reveals that this Pokemon is Corviknight's prey. And Bunnelby will start boring on the ground as soon as he hears the flapping of wings from a Corviknight. Diggersby. Diggersby is one of only two ground type Pokemon that's capable of learning the ground type move, Spikes. Which is pretty wild given that there's over 40 Pokemon that can learn this move. Fletchling. Just like with Daramaka's poop, Fletchling also keeps trainers warm who live in cold areas, and these trainers even sleep with them in their bed, which is pretty cute. Fletchinder. With the introduction of X and Y, the character limit for Pokemon names was increased, and Fletchinder was the first Pokemon to take advantage of that, which explains why Frialgator's name looks weird. Talonflame. Talonflame's wings are so tough that fire cannot pass through them, making them fireproof, and in the past, firefighters used to use Talonflame's feathers to make their outfits. Scatterbug. There is a Scatterbug in the TCG with an attack that lets it evolve directly into Vivlion, and all you have to do is flip ahead with a coin. Spoopa. Spoopa is the exact same size as its pre-evolution Scatterbug, and this is probably due to the fact that nothing really changes during its evolution besides the fur around it. Vivlion. Vivlion's national Pokedex entry is 666, which basically means it's the devil. <laughs> Litleo. In the Pokemon world, there is a meter shower named after Litleo called the Litleonids, which occurs roughly once in a millennium. Pyroar. Pyroar and its pre-evolution are the only Pokemon with a male to female ratio of 1 to 7, which is a reference to Lion Prides in the real world where there are males with several females around it. Flabebe. In X and Y, it was impossible to get a white or orange flower from Bebe with its hidden ability Symbiosis, and the reason why was because the only way to get a hidden ability Pokemon was through the Friend Safari, which only had Follette with red, blue, and yellow flowers. Floette. Eternal Follette has a signature move known as Light of Ruin, though this move went unused due to the fact that the event Eternal Follette was never distributed, and the only way to see this move in action is through the room service minigame at the Hotel Richardson, where a move is randomly picked. Florges. Florges has the fourth highest base stat total of a non-legendary, mythical, pseudo, or mega Pokemon, just behind school for Wishy Washy, Archops, and Arcanine, which is pretty insane. Skiddo. Skiddo in its evolution hasn't appeared in a main series Pokemon game since the debut in X and Y. And you have to keep in mind that X and Y released nearly a decade ago, so they've been MI for a while now. But thankfully it looks like they're gonna be brought back as Scarlet and Violet after all of this time. Go-Goat. Go-Goat had a different shiny form during the beta stages of X and Y. As you can see, it looked way too similar to the original, hence why it was changed. Pancham. Pancham is considered to be the hardest Pokemon to evolve in Pokemon Go, because for one, you need to obtain 50 Pancham candy, which is especially hard since Pancham doesn't appear in the wild often and only hatches from 12 kilometer eggs. And for two, you need to set Pancham as your buddy and catch 32 Dark-type Pokemon, and Dark-type Pokemon aren't very common encounters in the wild. Pangoro. Supposedly, those who wish to be Pangoro's trainer need to converse with them with their fists. And if that's true, I have no idea how the scientists from Team Flare beat Pangoro in a fight. Let's be real, they probably cheated. Furfro. Furfro was revealed on accident because in the September 4th, 2013 Nintendo Direct, Furfro appears on screen for not even a second. Just look at this. A moment when a player's feelings seem. Did you see it? I'll play it again in slow mo. This has got to be the shortest reveal of a Pokemon ever. Esper. Esper has yellow circles under its ears. Don't believe me? Well, look at this. Here's what they look like. Meowstic. In the Pokemon world, detective agencies like the Looker Burrow have Esper and Meowstic use their psychic power to act as trackers and translators, just like with the suspicious woman in Lumio City. Honedge. Honedge and his line are the only Pokemon that are both Steel and Ghost type, which leads to a strange interaction with the ability Magnet Pool, which prevents Steel type Pokemon from swapping out. In the end, its Ghost typing overrides the ability since Ghost type Pokemon cannot be trapped on the field. 
Dewblade. Dewblade has a higher defense stat than his evolution Aegislash in shield form. And this is due to the nerf that Aegislash received in Generation 8 where his best stats were reduced by 10 points each. Now Dewblade is considered to be a better physical tank with an Evil Light than Aegislash, which makes little sense because they're just two swords and no shield. Aegislash Aegislash is the only Pokemon in Mystery Dungeon to have a nickname that wasn't given by the player, with his nickname being Gilbrand, which is likely a reference to his Japanese name Gilgard. Spritzy There was a coding error in Sword and Shield that caused Spritzy to learn Draining Kiss twice, once at level 9 and then again at level 15, when it was supposed to learn Disarming Voice at level 9 instead. Aromatease The scent that Aromatease emits from his fur is so powerful that this Pokemon's companions will eventually lose their sense of smell. Swirlix. Swirlix is the epitome of you are what you eat, because according to his dex entry, it states that it eats nothing but sweets, resulting in his fur becoming sticky and cotton candy-like. Slurpuff. Slurpuff didn't debut in the Avengers manga until the Sword and Shield chapter six years later, where it was owned by one of Opal's gym trainers. Inke. To impersonate Ash, James disguises Inke as a Pikachu, and this is what it looked like. Malamar. Apparently Malamar's hypnotic powers played a big role in certain history-changing events. I wonder which event that could be. Binacle. In the anime, there are binacles shown without their rock, which just looks disturbing. Barbarical. Barbarical is seriously one of the, if not the weirdest Pokemon to ever exist. And apparently it's a combination of seven binacle coming together that all have a mind of their own. Skrelp. Skrelp apparently looks like rotten kelp, so it basically looks like this. Dragalge. It is stated in his Pokedex entries that Dragalge attacks ships and also gets along with Delmise. And since Delmise is stated to be a seaweed that merged with parts of a sunken ship, this is likely a sign of a symbiotic relationship between the two. Clauncher. Clauncher has been seen a surprisingly low amount of times outside of the games, with only appearing in 5 TCG cards, appearing in one episode of the anime, and never appearing in the manga. Clawitzer. Clawlister's Japanese name is Bloster, which is an anagram of the word lobster. Helioptile. According to his Pokedex entry, Helioptile gets its food from taking in sunlight, but on the same note, it has two abilities that directly hurt its HP while in the sun. So Helioptile that don't have the same availability are going to have a hard time in life trying to nourish themselves. Heliolisk. If you didn't know, Heliolisk can learn the move Surf, and this is probably a reference to how common Basculus in real life can run water for short distances. Tyrant. Tyrant has one of the best shiny forms, and I personally like it so much that I got one myself. And here's my reaction. <laughs> really oh, not. Oh, oh, yo, we got it! <laughs> <laughs> Tiantrum. Tiantrum's put its entries claim that during the time it lived, it was unbeatable, and they go so far to say that it was invincible. So canonically speaking, before its revival, Tiantrum might be one of the strongest Pokemon to have ever lived, and maybe during ancient times, it was considered a legendary Pokemon. Amora. It is said in Amora's Shield Pokedex entry that while extinct, it can sometimes be seen frozen in ice, but this doesn't really make that much sense given that it's an ice-type Pokemon, and ice-types cannot be frozen. Aurorus. There is a theory that Aurorus is an ancestor of Inteleon, because they both share yellowish frills, a blue coloring, and have long curly tails. Though, I'm not sure how strong this theory holds up. Sylveon. Sylveon has one of the funniest Pokedex entries. It states that it unflinchingly charges at dragon Pokemon that are many times larger than itself. So I can just imagine the sight of seeing this three foot little cat charging at an Eternatus. Halucha. Halucha is one of the only flying type Pokemon that can't participate in a sky battle. And really the only reason why it can't is because its animation doesn't depict it flying. And yes, Halucha can fly, since it can learn to HM and TM. Dedene. Dedene being a fairy type is a reference to the French version of the Tooth Fairy, which happens to be a mouse. Its pickup ability further supports this connection. Carbink. Unfortunately, Carbink is common prey for multiple Pokemon, normally being eaten by Sableye and Gabites. Gumi. Even though it's commonly referred to in the dex entries as the weakest dragon Pokemon, it still has a higher base out total than Noibat. So whoever wrote that is a liar. LIAR! Sligoo. Sligoo is currently the only Pokemon whose evolution depends on the weather, which is pretty surprising since we've had weather effects since Generation 1. Gudra. Gudra's Ultra Sun Pokedex entry says that it's very friendly towards people. If you grow close to it, Gudra will hug you with a sticky slime covered body. Don't get mad. I wonder what they mean by don't get mad. Does it turn on you and eat you? I feel like we need more information on this. Klefki. In the 26 Pikachu short, there is a special Klefki that has his own world, along with many keys for paths to other worlds. And this could possibly be the most powerful Klefki in the Pokemon universe, and really shows how strong fairy types can be. Phantom. Phantom and his evolution are the only ghost types in the Grass Egg group, and surprisingly their counterparts Pumpkaboo and Gorgais are not, even though they're literal fruit Pokemon. Trevenant. Trevenant is the only Pokemon that evolves via trade that can be found in his debut game, with its location being on Route 20 in the Chaos region. Pumpkaboo. Pumpkaboo's size determines its stats. The larger it is, the more HP and attack it has with the cost of its speed. 
Gorgeist. Each Gorgeist size has its own unique dex entry in Sword and Shield. Bergmite. Bergmite and Avalok's shiny forms are more yellow in color, which basically means that someone came over and peed on them in order to make them shiny. Avalug. In Ash's first battle against Wolfric in the anime, Wolfric's Avalug single-handedly swept Ash's team of three, despite Talflame and Halucha having the type advantage. Noibat. Noibat can take the most damage out of any Pokemon, with the damage count being 721,898,981 damage done by a Shuckle. And if you want to know how, check out my Shuckle video after this one. Noivern. Noibat and Noivern's German names are really weird, with Noibat's name being EFEM, which is a reference to FM radio, and also happens to be the only Pokemon name in any language that doesn't start with a capital letter, and with Noivern's name being UHAFNIR, which kind of looks like scrambled letters, but is based on radio and television frequencies. Exernius. Exernius's pupils are X shaped, which is ironic considering that it's the Pokemon of life. While depictions of X shaped pupils are usually used to indicate death, maybe Exernius is a real destroyer here and Evaltal is being framed. Evaltal. Evaltal is the only Pokemon that can learn Focus Blast by leveling up. All other Pokemon who learn it have to use a TM or TR. Zygarde. Zygarde has more signature moves than any other Pokemon, with the moves being Thousand Arrows, Thousand Waves, Core Enforcer, and Land's Wrath, totaling up to four signature moves. Deontzi. While it's not an evolution of Carpink, its exponent history states that Deontzi to be a sudden transformation of one, which sounds a lot like an evolution, so I wonder what's going on here. Hoopa. Hoopa, a Pokemon known for using its rings to travel and transport things, including gigantic legendary Pokemon, cannot learn the move Teleport, which makes no sense. Volcanion. Volcanion's movie is the last movie that takes place within the continuity of the main anime, with it being released over six years ago. Mega Venusaur During the late 1990s during Generation 1, there was a group of fake Pokemon known as Poke Gods, and one of them happened to be an evolution of Venusaur known as Sapisaur, and it looks strikingly similar to Mega Venusaur. It even mentions that it has thick fat, which is the ability Venusaur gains when it Mega Evolves. So I wonder if this is what inspired Mega Venusaur. Mega Charizard X I was going to say Alice Mega Charizard X was probably the strongest Charizard out there, since it only had lost twice and defeated Ash's battle Bonnie Greninja, but after the recent Journeys episode, I'll say that it's the second strongest out there, and I'll leave it at that. Mega Charizard Y Mega Charizard Y is one of six Pokemon cards that have an attack with 300 base damage, and funny enough, four of the six are other Charizard cards. Mega Blastoise Mega Blastoise's animations never actually used as cannons for its moves, even though it has three of them. Funny enough, the moves come from Blastoise's mouth. Mega Beedrill Mega Beedrill has the lowest special attack stat of all Poison-type Pokemon, including regular Beedrill and even Weedle. Mega Pidgeot The long piece of hair coming from Mega Pidgeot's head acts as a sensitive antenna and improves its stability while in flight. And this fact is pretty obscure given that it was only shown on the official Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire website, which is now taken down. Mega Alakazam Mega Alakazam's Pokedex entry states that it can receive its opponent's every move and the course of a person's entire life at a glance. Yet, at the same time, it can't learn the move Foresight or Mind Reader, which makes no sense. Mega Slowbro Mega Slowbro shares a defense stat with Cloyster, which is a neat reference to the fact that its Mega Evolution has only affected the Turban on Slowbro's tail. And if you didn't know, the shell's name is Turban, and it was almost its own Pokemon in Generation 2. Mega Gengar Mega Gengar's Ultra Sun Pokedex entry states that it tries to take the lives of everyone it comes across, even to the point of cursing its own trainer. Mega Kangaskhan The male protagonist, X from the Adventures manga, starts his journey with a Kangaskhan that is already capable of Mega Evolving. Talk about an OP starter Pokemon. Mega Pinsir Mega Pinsir has one of the cutest dex entries despite looking like a monster. It states that after Mega Evolution, it becomes able to fly, perhaps because it's so happy it really touches the ground. Mega Gyarados Back in 2002 in the 5th season of the anime, Misty sees a Pokemon that greatly resembles what Mega Gyarados looks like, and is referenced as a legendary Water-type Pokemon. And to this day, I still think this was an awesome nod that Game Freak did with Mega Gyarados. Mega Aerodactyl The official X and Y website, as well as Mega Aerodactyl's Pudding History, suggests that Mega Aerodactyl is what Aerodactyl originally looked like. So technically, this could be seen as a primal reversion, just like with Groudon and Kyogre. Mega Mewtwo X In his Let's Go Dex entries, it is stated that Mega Mewtwo's X grip strength is equal to 1 ton, and on top of that, it can stretch his arms as seen in Pokemon Tournament, so it'd probably be best not to mess with this Pokemon. Mega Mewtwo Y Mega Mewtwo's Y special attack is by far the highest of all Pokemon, sitting in at a whopping 194, with the second being a mere 180, which is not surprising because supposedly Mewtwo's brain power doubles when evolving into this form. Mega Ampharos Professor Oak predicted Mega Ampharos design back in 2004 with a Flaffy, as seen here. Mega Steelix An artist on DeviantArt known as Tommy Case drew a concept for Mega Steelix six months before it was revealed, and surprisingly, they got it really close to what it actually looks like. 
Mega Scizor. Mega Scizor's Ultra Sun Dex entry states that it stores the excess energy from his Mega Evolution, so after a while, its body starts to melt, which is pretty insane. Mega Heracross. Mega Heracross has the second highest attack stat of all Pokemon, just being beaten by Mega B2X by 5 points. Mega Houndoom. Mega Houndoom's Ultra Sun Dex entry states that its red claws and tips of its tail are melting from high eternal temperatures that are painful to Houndoom itself. But funny enough, this constant pain Mega Houndoom is enduring is good for nothing since Houndoom can't learn any claw moves. Mega Tyranitar. There is a Mega Tyranitar figurine in Pokemon Duels that can use Z moves, which might be the most broken combination we've seen in Pokemon. Mega Sceptile. For Mega Sceptile to launch its tail, it pumps up the two red balls until they explode that propels the tail to fire off. And you can see it here more in action and slow motion. Mega Blaziken. Mega Blaziken's ears were probably inspired by the pre alpha sketch of Torchic, where it had long dumbbell like ears. Mega Swampert. Around the time of Mega Swampert's release in the TCG, its required pre evolution Swampert EX had rotated out, making the card an orphan card, which means that it was unusable. Mega Gardevoir. In the Steam Siege expansion of the TCG, Mega Gardevoir was depicted as a villain. As the blurb on every Steam Siege booster pack read, Dual powers clash. Long years of stability come to an end when Shiny Mega Gardevoir EX lays siege to the Mighty Gear Palace with a host of greedy forces. And yeah, looking at his card art, it looks pretty malevolent in each of them. Mega Sableye. Mega Sableye is the slowest dark type Pokemon. This means that it's even slower than Alolan Grimer, a giant sludge Pokemon. I guess that giant gym is super heavy. Mega Maywile. Mega Maywile has the highest effective attack stat of any Pokemon, with a maximum of 678, which is a combination of its 105 base stat and its huge power ability. Mega Aggron. Mega Aggron loses rock typing upon Mega Evolution for some reason, and I'm pretty sure it's the only Pokemon to go from a dual type to a monotype upon evolution. Mega Metacham. The four ribbons coming from Mega Metacham's back are actually his ghostly arms, and the more Metacham trains his spirit, the more he can control them. Mega Manetric. Mega Manetric was never given an idle animation, so it just kind of stands there. Forever. Mega Sharpedo. Mega Sharpedo is depicted in its official art to have six spikes on its nose, three on each side. Though, if you look at its in game model, it doesn't have them. Well, it turns out they're actually retractable and only pop out for specific moves like Night Slash. So Mega Sharpedo essentially has six switch blades on its face. Mega Camerup. Mega Camerup has an M on his forehead, and some people theorize it stands for Magma, since it's a prominent Pokemon used by Team Magma members. Others theorize that it represents the Roman numeral for 1000 as in the magnitude of the lava temperature. Or maybe it stands for Majin from Dragon Ball Z. Is Camerup the Dragon Ball Z character? Mega Altaria. Mega Altaria is the only Mega of all Pokemon to have a unique typing, and what's even more interesting is that it shares neither of its pre evolution's typings. And this might just be the only time a dual type Pokemon has changed both its typings upon evolution. Mega Banette. There is a cave in the Chaos region called the Chamber of Emptiness, and as its name suggests, there's nothing in there. No Pokemon or anything, except for a spooky play and a Banette tight. Banette's Mega Stone. So basically, this entire location was dedicated to Mega Banette's stone. Mega Absol. Mega Absol actually hates being Mega Evolved, since it dislikes fighting. Mega Glalie. This is what Mega Glalie looks like without his ice mask. It looks pretty happy. Mega Salamence. Mega Salamence is known as a blood soaked crescent, so the red on its wings might actually be blood. Mega Metagross. It is stated in the Sun Dex entry that Mega Metagross is consisted of Metagross, a Matang, and two Beldum. So technically, before Mega Evolutions were a thing, you could have a Mega Metagross in your party. Mega Latias. Mega Latias and Latios are not completely identical. You can actually tell which is which by the color of their eyes. Latias has yellow eyes, while Latios has red. Mega Latios. For some reason, Mega Latios and Latios were coded in X and Y, despite being naturally unobtainable in them. All other Megas that were introduced in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are not in X and Y's code, so Latios and Latios are the only two that could actually be transferred. Primal Kyogre. This is what the Hoenn region would look like if Primal Kyogre was never stopped, and respectively, this is what it would have looked like for Primal Groudon as well. Primal Groudon. Primal Groudon gains a fire typing upon Primal Reversion, which ironically makes it weak to the ground type, the very thing that Groudon is supposed to be the ruler of. Mega Rayquaza. Mega Rayquaza was such a strong Pokemon that it created its own tier in the metagame, which became Anything Goes, and since then, it's been the only Pokemon to be outright placed there with no specific strategy. Mega Lapunny. Mega Lapunny has only been seen in the TCG as a tag team with Jigglypuff, which in my opinion is a pretty odd duo. They do look cute together though. Mega Garchomp. Mega Garchomp is actually worse than regular Garchomp because it loses important speed stat, the ability to hold an item like Life Orb, and gains a worse ability when Rough Skin is better. Mega Lucario. It is believed in the Chaos region that Lucario was the first Pokemon to ever Mega Evolve with a trainer. 
Mega Obama Snow. In the TCG, every Mega Evolution has been represented except for five of them, with Mega Obama Snow being one of them, and the other four being Mega Pinsir, Medicham, Bennett, and Latias. Mega Gallade. Mega Gallade totally has a dual disc and probably plays Yu-Gi-Oh! It even sort of looks like Kaiba too. Mega Audino. Even though in the games Mega Audino wasn't that great, in the TCG it was one of the best Mega Evolution cards in the metagame. It even helps Intaro Ito win the Pokemon World Championships. And finally, Mega Deonsi. You can arrange Deonsi's name to spell out Can I Die, which is pretty hilarious. And there you go, 122 facts about the 122 Chaos Pokemon. And if you want to help with the next video in the series, leave some comments down below about the Alolan Pokemon. The more obscure the fact is, the better. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey, did you know that this person right here is actually a Pokemon? And that's just one fact of the 156 facts for the Unova Pokemon. Go check it out right now. Or if you want to binge from Generation 1, click on this playlist right here. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.